G'day, everyone. Matty G from Insight NBA here as part of the Insight Podcast Network. Today is a very special show. What not to do? It might seem a little bit headlining and tagged like, you know, clickbaity, but it kind of is. Too often in our fantasy drafts, we write down lists, we write down names, and we recreate the magic that we might have had in a mock sometime where we all went our way and every pick went where we wanted it to go. Very rarely. It never happens. Mick Dell and I have re created the draft that I recently did with Adam King. The whole goal of this is to show you what not to do and to draft on the fly, take picks that you can get value about and don't just go with your plan because if your plan goes out the window, you need to be able to change tact in the middle of your draft. So not only is this a what not to do, it's a what to do if it does happen to you tips draft. We hope you enjoy it. And also make sure you check out our pod with the guys at Banner Z Scores. Right now, if you go to fantasyscores.com and enter the promo code INSIGHT, you can get yourself five US dollars off a subscription for their Yahoo trade and draft analyzer. It is an amazing tool that integrates perfectly into the Yahoo Fantasy Basketball system. Check it out. Use the discount code INSIGHT. Get yourself a discount. Enjoy the pod. Miami going for the three right away. Just attack the basket. James catches, puts up the three. Long go. Rebound back. Welcome to the Ultimate Super Coach and Fantasy Sports Show. You are now listening to the Insight Fantasy Sports Podcast. Boom shakalaka! What's good, everyone? This is at MBAG, we is also known as Maddie Garrett, with my boy, the super coach, the biggest of all the horses in the land. How you doing, Mickey Dell? Mr. G Wiz, how are you, brother? It's been a, a hot minute since we've got to do our mock draft together, but by reports, you've got something in store that I've got fucking no idea about here. Are you ready to raise the bat and hear the noise? <laughs> I just want that big Bronco unleashed today because I have a special yeah. treat for you. We've been doing these plot twist mix. Uh, Mick, I'm going to jump into my just into my Facebook for one second. Um, you were there as Buff Daddy, copy and paste. Mick Dell, can you open up your messenger now, please? I have just sent you a list of 13 players because you have no idea yep. what you are in for, my friend. Yeah, right. No, I don't. Can you read out that list? Of, yeah. Can you read out that list of names? Okay. Can you read out me that list of names? Sure. So Lamelo Ball, Kevin Durant, Carl Anthony Towns, Darren Fox, Scotty Barnes, Bradley Beal, Ja Morant, Wendell Carter Jr., John Collins, Scoot Henderson, Rick Horn Holmes, Sadiq Bay, and Usar Thompson of Detroit. Now, mate, we'll say this because we're about to do a mock draft, and we want to say a big shout out to our friends at Fantasy Scores. Uh, you can use their tool in Yahoo. We're going to be using that uh, from next week on Insight Fantasy Sports, and you can get five dollars off your registration. It's usually thirty-five bucks. You're going to get it for thirty US dollars by using the promo code Insight. It's an amazing tool because you and I are about to redraft right now what we did with Kingy's team. So I'm up pick in 20 seconds time, and I'm taking Nikola Jokic because this is the thing. Do not do this at home. Do not try and draft where you've drafted before. You are going to try and draft my team, and we are now, Mick, on the clock. I'll open that up in a second. So our big advice here, generally in speaking, is when it comes to your turn, share the screen in a second. I'm just taking straight away, recreating Kingy's number one pick, which was Nikola Jokic. Mick, do this. Absolutely do not try and recreate your drafts every single time. You're going to go in with a plan to your draft, right? Like you want your plan. You know your guys, yeah? Absolutely. How, yeah. Of, how, how often do, are you going to try and recreate your draft? Oh, I've got a certain group of players that I like drafting, but every time I do a mock draft, it's different. Sometimes they're there, sometimes they're not. So, I get where we're coming from here and in order to make several plans or be able to think on the fly as to who's going to fit into your team. So, yeah, I'm, I'm shit myself. I've got no idea how I'm going to go here. So you've got these list of players. You're going for LaMelo Ball at 12 because I had to pick it. So you're recreating my team. LaMelo Ball into Kevin Durant. I started with Jokic. I'm holding on to the end of the next round for Cade Cunningham and James Harden. They might fly off the board. Now, I can already tell you straight away that this play, this has changed. 
Nicola, um, number two has been Luca. Number three is Joel Embiid. Number four is Tyrese Halliburton. These are, are flying <laughs> off on their way up to you. Um, mate, What? who are you most scared about as we get to the turn in a second? Who are you most concerned is not going to be there for you? Well, Kevin Durant, and he's gone. So Kevin Durant there we went go. at number nine. So, so you are allowed to make any pick that you like to substitute Kevin Durant because Lamelo, the first pick, is still on the board for you. Still there, yes, yes, he is. So he, Anthony Edwards, went at eleven. That's interesting. So I'm able to mm. recreate Lamelo, and I'm going to have to pair him with someone. So I will go Anthony Davis. Yeah, you know what? That's a great shout. I was looking at Anthony Davis in my draft. So he's often there around the turn. So you have recreated basically what I was going to do. I lent into KD uh, on that one. So yeah, I like that. You've you've doubled that up very, very nicely, can, mate. I, I like that can I throw, you. Can I throw this to you, mate? With the signing of Christian yeah. Wood now, two years, five and a half mil for two years, he's another floor spacer. That means Anthony Davis is going to have to bang a little more inside, which is something he doesn't like to do. Do you think that yep. increases or decreases his fantasy value? I think it keeps it relatively the same. Christian Wood's there to prove something that he hasn't really proved in a couple of years. He's going to be one of the guys. Look, the, the rumor is that he's going to be battling for minutes with uh, Jared Vanderbilt and Rui Hachimura more so mm-hmm. than with AD. He's one of those okay. centers of the organization. So I'm quite happy with that to be the case. Um and, you know, they're flying off the board, these guys, when they come back around. I'm almost looking at my point on the turn right now, hoping that Cade and Josh um, come back. I actually might put those guys, uh, James Harden, sorry. I'm just going to put Cade in my queue because we did speak about the other day about you mm. want to make sure that you load your queue up with guys so then you can poop yourself. Yeah. And so I'm putting in my next two picks as we go through here. So I think he's relatively safe. I, I definitely see him returning top 15 value this season. Uh, so I have no problem with taking Anthony Davis in the tw- for a 12th pick. Like This is a guy. Mick, you'd say he's almost first round value most of the time when he's healthy? Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yep. Yep, does a little bit of everything. Now, look, Sabonis at 21 was good. Butler at 20. Don Mitchell, 19. Mikhail Bridges, 18. Kyrie, 17. Trey, 16. Booker, 15. Jaron Jackson Jr. went with the 14th pick, which is about where he's been. Desmond Bain, mate, he's got a lot of love in the second yes. round. Uh, mm. Pascal, now that was a guy I was looking possibly back on a turn at 23. That means I can recreate my draft currently. I can take yeah. Cade and I can take James Harden. Um, Back to back on things, mate. Who have you who have you found in this list that I've texted you? Who do you think it might be hard to get? I've texted you in the order that they came to me. By the way, I think so. You're looking for my next pick. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I think you might be in a trouble for De'Aaron Fox there as well. But De'Aaron's slid a little bit because after me, Kawhi Leonard's gone off the board. Um, mm-hmm. Who do you th- who who would you like to go if they're still around in this end of the uh, on the turn for this draft? Oh, good question. Uh, at the turn, I like – well, Van Fleet's still there. I'd love him at the end of the mm. third round. I, I don't feel like he's going to be there. I'd, I'd take LeBron at the end of the third round. I think even though he's got age in his body, I think he's still going to pump out some decent numbers for the games he plays. And for me, he's, he's a an awards chaser. And now that they've bought in the 65 games that you need to play in order to be part of NBA teams or all NBA teams, I think he's going to tick over that 65 games. Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I think there's this is every chance that we see him um, have an absolutely stellar season this year. Um, yeah, I like that quite a lot for you, mate. Um, and there goes Towns. There he goes. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's um, oh, that's going to throw some things into a bit of disarray for you, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? Oh, what am I going to do? Well, you can pick it up, Carl. I might just... Yeah, there's there's still some nice choices there. Miles Turner. Mm, that's is, a is great pickup. If he's still there. You love uh, stretch bigs, don't you? I do. Love them. Yep. Yeah. I I had Walker Kessler last year. Um he was he was really, really good. But with John Collins coming in this year, I think that restricts him a little bit or has an impact on uh, minutes played there. So He's, he's going too early for me. If he's still there at 50, 55, 60, awesome. But what's he been going at? Mid-30s, 40s? Yeah, yeah basically. Not yeah. for me. 
So Miles Toner is still there, so I'm going to pick him up on the fly. Yep. And then I can grab Darren Fox with my next pick. So that plan that you've given me has kind of half worked. So effectively, I've been- replaced Cat with Miles Turner. Yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Um, next pick up. Talk us through the next picks coming off the board, man. All right. So uh, before my two picks, Vucevic was at thirty-five. Bam Adebayo at thirty-four. Paul George thirty-three. Van Fleet slid to thirty-two. LeBron James at thirty-one. And Murray from Atlanta, number 30. Chris Tapps Persingas is still there. Does the plantar fasciitis worry you with the big seven foot three unicorn? Yeah, it always does. Injuries mm. always concern me with KP. Um, just because he's oft been maligned by injury his whole entire career. Boston's just paid him as well. So I don't think they're going to put him in a risky position um, anytime soon. So for me, I'm I'm really cautious of KP. He obviously had a great season in Washington last year, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty much where I want to leave him. A bunch of really great bigs have come off the board right now, including Evan Mobley at pick forty, uh, Drew Holiday there is forty one, Walker Kessler at forty second, Jamal Murray thirty nine, uh, Jalen Brown thirty eight. You picked up Foxy there. Uh, talk us through the next few picks, buddy. So. That's, that's all we've got that's taken at the moment. But for me, I'm hoping that Scotty Barnes and Bradley Beal make it around to my next couple of picks. So interesting to see because I think Bradley Beal in the 50s is really nice value. And same with Scotty Barnes. I can see him going 40s this year. Yeah, those were two guys in my picks who I was hoping would come back to me because they've dropped a little bit and Kingy took them off the board for me. He's done that a few times. He also took, see Victor Wembanyama there at 45. I think that represents value and he's starting to settle into mm-hmm. where about he's going. Chet Holgren straight away, 46 after him. Um, that means I'm looking like getting my next two picks. Kingy took these knowing that there's a bit of upside. Um, Josh Giddy on this one, as you can see, um, is yeah. ranked 66. He's t- taken Giddy, so I'll leave him there. And pulls up next. I'm going to take him off the board straight away as well. He represents for me top 50 value and taking him with the 48th pick, he's going to do a whole lot of work um, in Washington this season. So, mate, I'll take that one and talk us through the next few picks. Mate. So the next few picks, so when Benyana 45, Chet 46, Paolo Banchiro, or for our Aussie viewers, Paul Banchiro. Uh, Paul? Gideon Paul, yeah, Paul, Paulie Bankiro from the Orlando Magic, mate. Do you think that's a bit high? That's forty-seven. Yeah, yeah I just, I don't know how how we're rocking there. So, what have we got, Paul? Yeah, I don't know how it is either, mate. Yeah. My videos give it to me. I'm just going to refresh it. You keep on talking us through for a couple of minutes, mate. Yeah, no worries. So, I've got Porzingis has been picked at fifty. Tyrese Maxey at 51, which without Harden in the side, I think that's really nice value. But you'd want to see Harden be moved if you're willing to bank such a high pick on him. If Harden moves, he's got top 30 value for me. We've still got OG Ananobi, Nick Claxton, sorry, Brandon Ingram, DeAndre Ayton, Zach Levine, Brooke Lopez, Scotty Barnes is still there for me. Jalen Williams, who's been going quite high, is still there. Jarrett Allen. Still a number of nice picks. Someone that's really dropped that I'm looking at here, Julius Randle. He was going uh, end of second round, early third round in mock drafts earlier. What's happened there, G? Mate, I don't know. People just don't seem high on um, on Orange Julius this year, and I like mm. him. I think he still represents value in New York until any ma- massive trade or acquisition is made there. So if he's dropping into the 50s or 60s, look, he's not that great with field goal percentage, but he does chip in a lot across the board. Like he's not the, like I won't say he's like an absolutely shinily huge player. Oh, there you go. Scotty Barnes is off the board with 54. He's gone gone 50. I love Scotty Barnes for a bounce back season. Go bear at 55. There we go. We just speak about him. And then he goes off to Jatoro's tide, uh, Julius Randall, Deandre Ayton, who you mentioned as value with the 50th. People are also very weak on, on Deandre Ayton this year. Mm. Um, I think he's falling in now to value right there. 59th pick. Uh, Brooke, uh, Brooke Lopez has gone off the board. Who have you got there in your queue? To, who are you supposed to be drafting right now? Yep, so I'm supposed to be drafting Scotty Barnes, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick 
who I'm meant to be picking in Bradley Beal with this pick. Mm -hmm. And yep. then to shore up things for me, uh, Zach Levine's fallen to 61. So I'll grab him Ooh. to fill my small forward shooting guard spot. Yeah, that's really good. And I could tell you were probably tossing up there someone like Jalen Williams as well, because I know you yeah, like 100%. those plug and plays. And, and I, I, I saw his name there, and you can see that uh, on the screen share right there in the queue, that he was like just a couple of names down. Jared Allen's there, Jalen Williams, Cam Johnson, uh, Shen Goon. So these are all really good players around that turn. Now, mm. the X rank there is really dubious. You can see that Yahoo goes by X rank. You can filter by their actual rank. Guys here who were really high for last season, I wanted to speak about. There's a guy like Devin Vassell who I know that is coming up as one of my next turns. So I want to make sure I cue Vassell up. But Trey Murphy, we haven't had an update on his injury uh, for this year. That's obviously a bit of a devastating. I'm fearing it could be on the worse side of that because we haven't heard anything yet. I'm looking at Zion Williamson, 67. Uh, uh, Tyus Jones, 66. Tyus has moved up early. Have you found Tyus is just getting more and more hyped and people are picking him up sooner and sooner now? Yeah, I think so. Just given his ability to stuff the the box score, so to speak, he got me a sneaky triple double at the back end of last year without Jar Moran around. So, I, I think there's really good value there. Yeah, I agree with you, mate. Now, Kingy took it this turn. He took Vassell, who I look like I'm going to get unless this Mark bloke snares him from me. I've been pretty lucky falling into this. The thing is, I've got Jalen Williams still on the board now. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll a back on back. I'm going to change my plan to be like, oh, look, I like this, but there's the best player on the board. So the strategy here that we were saying, I'm going to take if someone comes off. You need to be able to willing, if someone's letting someone slide, like Jalen Williams right now in the 70s is where I picked him up last year. And I want to smash that button. You can just see me hovering there. You can see me with 18 seconds. I'm mm. not. I'm going to take Devin Vassell. He was high on a Kong. So I'm going to play a dangerous yeah. game with my... Yeah, I'm going to play a dangerous game. I'm going to take Jalen Williams because I don't want anyone else to get him. But a Kong Wu, I'm going to see where he slides now to see if I can pick him up. So I guess our tip that we were talking about, Mick, is you need to be taking the best available player if they're still there in the hopes mm -hmm. of getting your player back in the next that's round. Because at these turns, mate, we're talking like 20 plus picks, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, 20, yeah, 22, 23 picks in between. Yep. So, so I've yeah, taken Jalen. You like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take him, uh, Jeremy Grant, uh, seventy-four. Chris Paul at seventy-five. I think that's high there, mate. What do you reckon? Too high. Yeah. 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 He's going to play you... eighteen minutes a night. Like he's he's yep. not going to do much. He's not, is he, mate? Who have you got in your queue next up? Talk us through those okay. next two picks that I drafted the turn. Yeah. So the next two I was meant to pick were Jar Morant, who went at pick sixty. And Wendell Carter Jr., who is still on the board. So I will have to try and plug and play one at least. Now, that bloke, uh, Mark Anthony, he was shaping up well. He was the third pick with uh, Joel Embiid. He's picked up along the way Chet Holger and Larry Market and Franz Wagner, uh, Desmond Bain, Tyrese Maxey, and Chris Ball. He's not looking too bad. Looking at your team, you've managed to pretty much, this is the great thing, you've managed to adjust on the fly. What's your number one strategy? What's your number one tip you can give listeners and viewers when drafting on the fly like this? And your plan starts to go awry. Your queue gets decimated. What's your number one apart from stay calm? Yeah, yeah. Number one, number two, number three, number four, and number five is stay calm. You just got to keep a level headed, not panic. So for me, I'm just looking for players that fit within the system for what I'm looking for. I've got rebounds. I've got blocks there in AD and Turner. I've got some scorers in Levine and Fox and Beal to an extent. Lamelo Ball does a bit of everything. Here now I'm looking for – so I'm going to be picking up Wendell Carter Jr. So I can, I'll can i just pick him up now. Yep. And then I'm also looking for a forward that sort of fits the bill when it comes to – what I'm doing here, but I don't really see a lot. Let's go Chris Middleton. I guess. Oh, he was one of my guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah there's, there's a definite bounce back season this season. He played fuck all last season. He's a core piece yeah. of Milwaukee there. They're going to want to have a good yeah. season given that the little uh, speculation around Giannis. So he's back. Damn it. 
Oh, that breaks my balls. Um, I had Miles Bridges as my replacement in the back of my head. I'm like, Jesus, who am I going to like tap to um, really early? Uh, I'm going to have to go to my, my big board. I'm going to look at my big board. Oh, geez, you've done me. So I had that flying off the board after that. You've, you've, killed, you've killed me, Del. Uh, Anthony Simons, Miles Bridges at 87, Kuzma. Damn it. 88. I like Kuz at 88. I think that's going to be a really good return for um, Jotaro at the, uh, this season in this draft. Marcus Smart at 89. I'm pretty sure my, my guard spots are filled up with Cade and Harden and Giddy bringing me that extra. I love the fact that almost around 100. I'm looking at guys like D'Angelo Russell, Markel Fultz. Um, yeah. yeah. And there goes D'Angelo Russell with the 90th pick. I just think that, he, look, if he is going to be that trade ship, chip for an unhappy Kyrie or whatever situation that goes, because that contract is a trade contract. It's very, it's very generous. Um, yeah, I'm, oh, you've really done me in with Middleton. A Kongwu is going to be there. So he's going to be, I promised that I was going to hold out and see if he can come back to me. He is, his average draft is about 106. So this is around the zone um, that he's going to be going. I need to probably, I need to block in that extra center spot but there is one name i'm going to search on my board right now and i'm going to talk mark williams yep so you can see that his adp is coming to 134 and that's obviously changed a little bit um with the re-signing of um with pj washington there in charlotte so he's slipping down in draft slot i still think he is very very good value i am going to take a mecca okongwu replacing replacing Middleton, I'm thinking of someone in that similar forward spot who can play some small forward, power forward, and fill that up. Um, yeah. There is one guy who is left on the board, and it's about his zone right here. You can see that his average rank is 83. He, he plays his role, and, and if he doesn't get moved in Philadelphia, Tobias is going to have to do some heavy lifting. So if I'm keeping that same spot in that same draft area, Tobias Harris, around that same in the 90s for me, is, is going to be a return. He's, been, he's, he's about as dependable as there's come. There is nothing really attractive about Tobias Harris on your team. You're not going to look at that and be like, oh, you picked up Tobias Harris in the hundreds. Yeah, of course no. he did. Um, when guys with upside like Keegan Murray, he's gone off the board a couple picks afterwards. Bobby Portis there at 100. But Tobias was my replacement uh, on Middleton, mate. How do you reckon that fares for me? Oh, God. Yeah, uh, I like it. He, it's just that it's consistency. You know what you're going to get out of him. You're going to get some boards. You're going to get some points. Yeah, the occasional steal. Was he averaging just under a steal a game last year? So just yep. he's a safe pick at 100. Yeah. Yeah, he, he is. And I like so, I like that. I'm, yeah, geez. Uh, Shannon Sharp's going off there. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's gone. Jeez. Gafford. Gafford's gone. Some some people who you were holding hoping on to now. So who have you who are you mm. thinking right now? You got four or five so, picks. Thinkers, talk us through what. Yeah, I was due to pick John Collins next, and then Scoot Henderson the pick after that. John Collins went at one hundred and one. So now I'm looking for Scoot will be there. I just I don't know about Time Lord's efficiency this year or his fantasy value with Porzingis there. Yeah concerns me you did mention on that kp injury earlier he almost then becomes a handcuff to kp as well so if kp does, does go down injured he's going to have to step up a lot i like mm. I, I i'm not gonna lie i think your gut look go with your gut instinct there mate if you can get robert williams i see him having like top seven round value uh, and now you're picking up in the ninth so you're going to get some value return back on him for sure All right, so Scoot Henderson is still there, so we will pick him up with the next pick. Yep. And then I've got Carter Jr., I've got Turner, I've got Davis. It's very centre-heavy. It is. I'm uh, – yeah, I think I need to shore up my assists here. Yep. So I'm going to pick up – You're Spencer allowed Dinwiddie. whoever you want. Oh, okay. Spencer with 109th. Okay. So you're starting to fill up those assists and shake it out a little bit more. Why did you lean into that guard spot there when you had that replacement, when your guy went off the board? How did you mentally change tact? What did you look for? So as, as we just said, I'm a little bit center heavy with Carter Jr., Miles Turner, Anthony Davis. So here it's it's very hard looking at picks 100 onwards to to fill up with some nice assists and value there. With Dinwiddie at Brooklyn, they're talking the talk with Simmons, but 
I still see Dinwiddie being a facilitator there. He's good for seven assists and I don't know how many points he's going to average this year. It'll be less if Simmons is playing fully, but I still think he's got a role to play, especially, you know, if Simmons doesn't play. At the back end of last year, he was averaging a double-double assist and points, so could do a lot yeah. worse. You, yeah, you could do a lot worse at that point in your draft. Um, the big thing for me was Ja Morant going off the board there for you um, before that mm. pick. He went at 63. That's probably – look, that starts to be in the shades of too high for him. I drafted him heavy yeah, in that team because I was happy to ride with the team that I had. I was happy to finish in my standings and my – and my like, and like when I looked at it, if I could be in the middle, upper middle pack, knowing that from 25 games back on, I'm literally resetting my clock in a way to know that then that's when I'm on till the rest of the season – it put me in really good seed because of what back end value he can give. And I'm not going to say he's going to return that. But he's going to return top 30, top 40 value. And if you're picking that up in the seventies, that's where it comes back to my guys. Again, this is an interesting case. I'm high on Bruce Brown this season because he's Mr. Swiss army knife. I shouldn't say yeah. his name, put my eye on him next. Cause he's one of the guys that Kingy drafted that I wanted and he took. So he's now come on that, you know, that profile of shifting down around like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to take a guy. I'm going I'm to take the best value right now, which I did with Jalen yep. Williams. And I hoped and I prayed that I could get a Kongwu back. I managed to get a Kongwu back, um, but I missed out on Chris Middleton because you took him. So I've had to yeah. go. And since then, before this one, after your pick there, um, I've rolled, we've had, uh, I'll talk back through the picks after Rob Williams. Um, we've got Spencer Dinwiddie. It's, Jaylen, it's, your, uh, pick. it's your pick now, Matty. I'm taking, I'm taking Brucey Brown. And then I can roll that into Kingy's pick who had uh, Zach Collins right there. Before that was uh, Roman Barrett Jr., RJ, uh, Jalen Duran, Malcolm Brogdon, Jordan Clarkson, who would have been a nice little flyer there uh, to pick mm-hmm. up the Filipino legend. Um, um, Zubach, Melton, Gordon at 113. Uh, Robert Williams then slipped to 112th, which I think is a massive pickup. And then uh, you're looking at guys um, in before that one, Kevin Herter, Jalen McDaniels, and Spencer Dinwiddie. Mick, Trey Jesus. Murphy still just got – Yeah, that's that's nice, picking Trey Murphy at 123. Yeah. You, Yusuf yeah. Nurkic is still there at 127. Actually, he's just yeah. been picked up. Crazy value there. Now, these are auto-picking up to you. So this is where if people are leaving your draft or anything's going on on one of these uh, mocks, they fly out the door early, and this starts to draft mm-hmm. down. So I'm not going to get my next pick. Obi Toppin was going to be one of mine. I'm going to remove um, Mark Williams. Oh, he's still there. I might just pick him up at the end. No, you no, you bastard. Are you going to take him? No. No, because right. some, some of the picks that I've got here are still there. So I can let you trade one. You buy me a beer, I'll let, let you trade, trade in one. one. Beautiful. Oh, oh, oh. Well, then I'm I'm yeah. going to get rid of Sadiq Bay. Yeah. This is my trade, and I'm bringing in someone that I believe brings in a lot of out of position rebounds, and that is Josh Hart. I absolutely love that. In fact, I was hoping to pick him up if someone went because if Obi Toppin went, I'm going in with Josh Hart as my. So seeing Obi Toppin go at 131 gives me some hope that people are a, a little bit high on him as much as I am. I'm not high on him to say go and get him in the hundreds, but if he's still sitting around there, uh, I managed to pick him up late in that draft. I was going to take him 100%. So uh, seeing him go off just before that. If I was you, I would have tried to snake him for me 100%. Um, I love him there. But that has caused me some concern because I might not be able to get some other guys. So Ben Simmons is still there. So I will be able to pick up Ben Simmons here um, very late. This is actually around later than he went. And Quentin Grimes was the other guy that he picked up in that draft to finish out the pick. So again, when you're finishing with pick number one, what Kingy and I discussed the other day, and I know that you're a big fan of this too, Mickey Dell, is that if you're finishing with that one, two or three pick and you know that you've got a really quick turnaround, you need to have your final upshot picks in the back of your head 100%. Yep, 100%. And all Um, my players are gone. So I've got a draft on the fly last one. Well, your last one's not, but I'm going to snake him. Can I draft in? Because he, yeah, Kingy took, Kingy took in Quentin Grimes. I managed to pick up at the very last pick, Asua Thompson, at like 
pick 100 and like, I think it was pick 156. I think it ends up being, I love his upshot. I will take Ben Simmons cause he's still there. Um, and picking him up now, it's a no risk drop at 145 to see what it's for sure. For sure. I, Good pick. I, I like that there. And he just, just kept on going back and back and back. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with Saw Thompson. I really like what I'm going to put him up there. Um, in my list, guys who are still on the board rank-wise, Kyle Lowry, um, KCP, Tara Eason. This is the first draft I've been in where Tara Eason hasn't been taken in the last couple yep, of rounds. Got him in my queue now. Yeah. You do? Yeah, that's a smart pick. Guys like KCP, Matisse, Patrick Williams as well. He can have a bit of a return to form in Chicago this season. Uh, and I go, it's it's bad protocol to not talk about guys, but I think it's with the last pick. Do you look for someone solid to give you assist or are you looking for upside with this last round, Mick? Yeah, looking for upside here. Yep. Uh, I think I've just found my diamond in the rough. Someone who I oh, like yeah. if I don't get Tari. You're, you're smoky. Yeah, I'm a little smoky, but I, I don't think he's going to go because he's he's uh, X rank at the moment's 196. So I'm going to think I'm anyone's looking at him, but who you can have a bit of a look. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scroll down so you see your X rank of 196. <gasps> Mr. Avia, Danny Advia. Yeah. Mm, Love him. Okay. Love him. You do love without you do love him. Last, yeah, without Pazingas last year, he was awesome. Rebounded well. They went through him a little bit more on offense. I think there's big upside in him this year. And at six yeah, foot ten, a- six foot eleven can can guard the perimeter, can shoot the three ball. Yeah, I like it. He fits your team well, Mickey Dell. I'm not gonna lie, mate. I like that. But this is the thing. I wish I could have taken him now. But I didn't because I wanted to take that sexy last minute pick of taking a rookie uh, with a Saw Thompson. Yep. But Mark Williams did not get drafted in this draft. And I, I like it's obviously now, it, this is the difference between a mock draft and a cash league. In a cash league, he's on your radar. Everyone's going to be looking at guys like Mark Williams and, and looking for to pick up a guy like that one. Um, mm-hmm. And then Quentin Grimes, the other pick that Kingy was high on in New York uh, because of what he did down the stretch and with the opportunity, he was still on the board here. Um, but guys like Karis LeVert, Dylan Brooks, Patty Williams are still around. Uh, mm-hmm. Lou Dort, what names that are still left in the queue do you think there could be some value in? Have a little bit of a look there, Mickey, and tell me who you think, mate. James Wiseman. Mm. I think there could be some potential there. It, it just depends on how Detroit go about their rotation there. Yeah. Uh, who PJ Washington going? is still on the board. Yeah, Tim Hardaway right. Jr. Some floor yeah. spacing in Dallas to offset that. Guys like Malik Dennis Martin. Schroeder. Yeah, Schroeder's a good one. He hasn't he had an incredible fever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think this year too, with Golden State getting a little bit older, I think Kaminga's going to have a more prominent role. Mate, I've got your team up here on the board. Talk us through uh, your okay. team. And what you like about them the most, what you don't like about it. And what was challenging about you going in with the plan? Because again, do not do this. Do not go in with the plan. Like I must get this guy with the third pick. Like that's my guy. That's my upshot guy. You need to be reflexive along the whole entire way in your draft. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'll cook it. You'll panic and you'll make an error of judgment. So what we're trying to do is avoid those consistently. Um, You had to a couple of times. How did you adjust? Because you you had it like three or four times. I was a little bit luckier. I still panicked a little bit. Like, oh God, who am I taking? How do you deal with that, Mick? Uh, as we said before, you just you keep calm. You sort of you keep tabs on, <coughs> pardon me, who you've traded pre. Oh, sorry, who you picked up previously, and and look at your strengths and see, righto, this is what I need. This is what I'm deficient in. And then if you're punting, it sort of makes things easier. So for me, I went a little bit guard heavy early, just purely because I've been seeing in mock drafts, especially that. Some decent centers have been lasting through to picks 100, 110, 120, where I feel I can get value there. For me, the back end of the draft as well, I picked some players, Josh Hart, Denny Avdia, out of position, rebounds, a bit of defense as well, can potentially score some points. Scoot Henderson there is a bit of an unknown, but if Dane Lillard goes, that's a really nice pick at 100. Uh, Dinwiddie for assists and Rick Horn Holmes, who knows? He could be the starting center if it plays out that way, depending on how Dwight um, Powell goes there. 
Yeah, the Raccorny, we call him, Mr. Rashawn Holmes. I loved him in his glory days at Sacramento. I, I would put him in, and he was writing me a double-double every single game with excellent field goal percentage. He doesn't really QQ you as well by way of free throw percentage as someone like a Walker Kessler. You're obviously not going, and that's a bad comp, to be fair, because obviously Walker Kessler is yeah. really tight, that really high block percentage. That being said, Dallas does need a rim protector. Like, they, they really do need that. And he's only projected. And, like, if he can step up and get some of that back – that's great. But his free throw percentage uh, as a shooting big wasn't bad. It was up in the 700s, 750s. He's projected yeah. this year to be 790, um, according to Yahoo. I don't think it's going to be there. But it's, if it's still plus 700, he's not really taking away like anything by way of free throw percentage. Because if you can offset that with a couple of high volume 900 guys, high 800 guys, well, then that makes up and compensates for it automatically by way of volume. But yeah, I like how that shook out for you. And I really like some of the change of tax you've got there to pick up guys like Josh Hart. I think that's an absolutely elite pickup um, that late mm -hmm. in a draft. Each of those out of position rebounds, but he's just one of those players who fills up the stat sheet for you mm -hmm. everywhere you go. That shook out pretty well. For me, at the end of the day, look, I'm not going to lie. It was a really competitive draft. I think a couple of the picks, picking up Jalen Williams for me that late was an absolute steal. That's so nice. getting him at yeah. three, which is where I took him last year because I was high on him and I just wanted to make sure that I had him. And I know that we were in a couple of drafts together last year. And I was like, here goes Garrett. He's going to mm -hmm. grab him again. I did. And it was like, it's too early. And I stayed with him the whole entire yeah. year. It's a trade back for value. Because rookies will go through up and downs. And I think that's something you need to understand as well. Like if you are drafting these guys high and that's one of your things that you've tied yourself to, oh, I want to make a young team. I want to make a rookie team, a, like a second year sophomores kind of team. That's really good. When they don't perform well and you invested a high pick in them, you need to see where it goes for the longest amount of time before you cut on cents on the dollar and you don't return that back. 100%. So like you just can't, it's not, you just don't want to give the keys to your car and then crash it. That's fine. Go and pay for the repairs. Like, you know, put the money where your mouth is. Um, obviously, when you're building a team around the Joker, you can pretty much do anything, can't you? You can. Yep, he does He does lots of everything. You don't um, need to where do you anything, think, do you? Not really. No, where do you think your strongest, like, your, where do you think you could build next time in trades or look at the target some, free, um, some waiver guys? What do you think your strengths and weaknesses are there at the end of the day, Mick? Strengths, rebounds. I think points, I'm pretty good. Yep. I think I would need to improve on three points and three-point percentage for me. I don't think I'm overly strong in that department, so that might be a punt. Yep. Uh, free throws, yeah, that's not really strong for me either. So, yeah, that might be another punt category. So probably looking at probably a little bit more three-point Percentage, three-point shooters. I see Luke Kennard still sitting there. He had an awesome end to last season. He might be a guy you pick up off waivers when they've got a four-game week or something like that. But, yeah, yeah if you can, back to the drawing play, board. And play. I think what, what we're trying to say is your plan's never going to come out 100% all of the time. So do yeah. mock drafts. Uh, for someone like us, we've just – been lucky enough to sign on with Fantas said scores. So do yourself a favor, sign up there. It gives you everything. So you can pick a team, you can have a look at what your strengths and weaknesses are on that and yep. go from there. See how you can improve your team, what you can possibly negate or devise a draft strategy that suits you. Yeah, 100%. I think that's one of the great things about what we've got with our friends over at Fantasy Scores is that you can actually get on there and you can set waiver pickups. You can look at your – it can make recommendations for you. Uh, it can mm. predict how you – as a draft tracker on there. It's a Yahoo exclusive, so it just exclusively deals with the Yahoo um, application and their online website. So if you are a Yahoo user, which many people are, you can be ESPN or Fantrax. Great. You can use those and find tools to work that one. But if you do a lot of Yahoo, get onto this straight away. Use the promo code INSIGHT. Uh, get $5 off your subscription. They're hooking you up with that one. Big thanks to Fantasy Scores. Big thanks to our friends at the Standard Squeeze. And also a big thanks to our friends over at Astute Newstead. Our friend Ryan there, mm -hmm. he's one of the best financial blokes in Australia. You can absolutely look him up at Ryan. H at eganwealth.com.au. Get in touch with Ryan. Mate, I know you've dealt with Ryan before for house stuff and finance. He's an absolute sure. legend to work with, isn't he? Yeah, su such an easy guy to talk with. 
text messages, phone calls, emails. It's never an issue. And best of all, it's free of charge unless you actually sign on the dotted line and go through with it. So you can, you know, send emails morning, noon or night. He, get, he gets back to you often within the 12 hours. Um, yeah, very easy to deal with. And for us, found us a very competitive home loan that matched the best that was out there. So stoked with how he was with us. Yeah, you don't need to get pigeonholed into one lender. Uh, like Ryan looked, specializes in residential home loans, uh, personal, vehicle, and business loans as well. So do reach out to him. Mention that Insight sent you. He'll hook you up even extra proper with that one. Obviously, his email again, ryanh at eganwealth.com. That's ryanh at eganwealth.com. And you can call him or text him on 0431 766 784. That's 0431 766 784 here in Australia. And be like, hey, we just heard about you on the uh, Insight Fantasy Pod here for the Insight NBA show. Um, mate, need a home line. Hook us up. Big horse. Absolutely. Th- thank you very much, my guy. That was fun. That was. It was. It was unexpected, but I'm glad I did it because it just, I guess it gives me another string to my bow that, hey, you can launch some stuff at me and I've got to think on the fly and you keep calm, you talk through it and I'm still pretty happy with my team. I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I think you actually recovered in those places really, really well. And I think that's the thing as well. The best advice is one, don't panic. Two, have a plan. Mm-hmm. Three, always be conscious of the guys who slip in value. Put them in your queue. If you start to see guys, you're like, wait a second, that's like Jar's still there in the 75. I know he's missing 25 games, but is that too good to resist? And it is too good to resist. And you just chomp on that straight away and you and you jump onto it and you get those guys about like I did with Jalen Williams in the 73rd pick. He's probably quite a, like a top 60, top 55 player. If I'm getting him at the 73rd, 74th pick, that's good. And I guess Mick as well. Be know who you really want to build around when you have so many picks always in between your uh, in these slots at the turn. Yeah, absolutely. You, you've got to keep track of how many picks you've got there. I highly encourage you to do as many mock drafts as you can. Draft from different positions. Set yourself, you know, some sort of draft strategy. If it plays out, awesome. If not, like us, think on the fly. It'll help you become comfortable and you'll be more calm. Come your actual cash or friends legs that you'll be wanting to be quite competitive and win against your mates. Yeah, look, don't do it. Don't go into your draft. Do not do this. Do not tie yourself to having to pick a dude at a certain place. If you do that, you are going to absolutely do your nana in and you are going to be there scratching yourself six ways from Sunday, gouging your eyes out and losing your league very, very quickly if that's going to be something that you heavily invest in. So best advice from us at Insight Fantasy Sports, be okay with change. Know some targets around those ADP values as well. And also just be aware of who your league is building and who's what they're targeting. And if you can find that out, you might be able to snipe a few of their guys back and get some return value and get some little tasty, some tasty trade targets, some tasty trades. Wait that a is minute. Me. That's the smartest thing I've ever heard anyone say about anything. Apart from Mick Dell, you're a very sexy man. Thank you very much, sir. Good on you, brother. This has been an at Insight NBA podcast, the Insight Fantasy Sports Network. Make sure you like the page, get onto your Apple, Spotify, iTunes, give us all the ratings, give us the five stars up and give us all your love and money. Don't give us your money. We don't charge anything because we love it. Take care from Insight. (laughs) See ya.